Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-15. When last we were with our heroes, they were fighting the wanted fugitive Lothar Metal in the sewers beneath Phoenix. Two members were injured, two were unconscious, and Fargus was about to be run through by Lothar's blade when the bandit was caught on fire and ignited the room full of items. We rejoin them as Fargus realizes he is on fire too. Eyes fluttering, Fargus watched as the bandit spun around the room, setting several boxes on fire as the interior was lined with hay. The ranger felt burning on his legs and quickly realized he too was on fire. Thinking quickly, he rolled across the stone floor several times, patting out the flames as he did so. He looked around quickly and observed that Cave, Welby, and Irena were still down and a dazed and bleeding sister Elaine slumped on top of the halfling rogue. Fearing the room would become an inferno and they would not escape, he jumped to his feet, ignoring the burning pain in his legs. Lothar was spinning around the room, and the ranger plowed his shoulder into the bandit leader, knocking both into the trench of sewer water. A flurry of blows followed as Fargus, overcome with anger, beat the man unmercifully. After several minutes of pummeling, the ranger heard the weak voice of Sister Elaine call to him. One last punch on the unconscious Lothar was delivered and Fargus ran to assist the cleric. The human rifled through the cleric's belongings and located the healing elixir that still had a dose left. He put it to Elaine's lips but she refused and weakly pointed to Irena. Asking if she was sure, she nodded weakly. He scooted to the crumpled body of the elven mage and noticed that she was at death's door. He cradled her head in his lap and poured the healing potion down her throat plugging her nose. A few moments later, the woman came to, coughing and choking on the concoction, but alive. Cabe had finally cut through the bonds that held him and was applying pressure to Sister Elaine's thigh that was the site of a vicious wound. The pain stung her back to clarity and she quickly whispered a short healing verse. The gash partially closed and stopped bleeding, but still needed more attention. Fargus shook the unconscious halfling until he woke up and muttered, No, Mom, I don't want to go to school. Seeing the torch start to dim, he noticed that several boxes were still on fire. Fargus threw several boxes at the unconscious Lothar and the sewer water to put the flames out quickly. The flying debris gave additional injury to the bandit leader and smoke began to fill the chamber. Once the fire was out, the ranger checked on his friends. While battered and bleeding, it appeared that the group would live despite such a close call. As Welby O'Toole continued to ransack the boxes of stolen goods, Cabe called for silence. An exhausted Lady Irena nodded as the bard looked at her, indicating that she had heard the same thing. What is it? asked Welby. Cabe responded, I hear a dog, and it doesn't sound too far away. The group discussed the issue and thought it would be prudent if the rogue and bard scouted ahead while the ladies took a breather and Fargus took care of Lothar. A torch was given to the halfling and the pair scampered down one of the two access tunnels where the noise was coming from. The tunnel was clear of smoke from the fire and had a wider trench with several tributaries dumping into the tunnel. Additional wet paw prints were discovered in yet another chamber that was quickly found to be empty. More trenches were found in the area, and a low roaring noise could be heard along with several barks. Welby looked at Cabe and inquired if the new noise was a lion. The bard laughed loudly before quieting him. That is the sound of rushing water, not a lion, you dolt. He chided the halfling for a few moments before nodding to the exit tunnel. I hear a low growl from that direction, guided the bard. A short distance away, the rushing noise became louder, and the pair found the source of both noises. A small beagle was tugging at a bone lodged in the debris dam near an exit port on the wall. With the adventurers in boot-deep water, they waded in back 
slowly so as not to scare the dog. The half-elf calmly creeped up on the canine, giving it a low whistle. With one ear cocked, the dog wagged its tail and took a playful stance until Cabe could grab him. Gotcha! He triumphantly announced and started to wade back from the exit grate. Petting the dog, he checked the name of the tag and proudly announced that they had finally found Scotty. Welby walked past him to see what the dog was barking at. Hey look, the halfling yelled, he just wanted this bone. As the rogue reached for the item, Cabe yelled out for him to stop, but it was too late. The bone was the sticking point for the debris dam, and as the rogue pulled it free, the pile shifted and spat out of the exit tunnel. The suction dragged the diminutive delver behind and out of the chute. Water rushed past Cabe quickly and sent him flying down on his keister, barely maintaining a hold on the dog. As the water quickly escaped, Cabe used his elven dark vision to peer out of the exit port. Welby had managed to reach up where a partial grate hung down and secured a hold on it. Swinging out over the cliffside above Phoenix Bay, the halfling was rather shocked and saw Cabe approach. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Help me off this thing, damn it. Seeing his associate safe, the bard breathed a sigh of relief and then poked fun at him. I don't know, you're pretty stupid enough to get yourself into this predicament. Maybe I should let you hang out for a while. Get it? Hang out. The halfling looked at him blankly and said, You, sir, should be a jester, not a bard. Gingerly stepping through the trench, Cabe reached out an arm. Welby swung himself several times and launched himself into the bard safely. Unfortunately, he knocked Scotty out of his arms and the dog took off down the tunnel. Cabe rebuked his associate, but stopped when the bone was brought out. You didn't think I'd just let it go, did you? Pointed out the damp halfling. He smacked the item against the wall several times and whistled. The action brought about the desired response and the Scotty came running back. Welby tossed the dog of the human femur, to which the dog promptly grasped the trophy in his teeth and wagged his tail. A damp lasso quickly flew around its neck as Welby had taken some of the hemp rope found earlier and captured the dog. A broad smile crossed the halfling's face as he pointed to his handiwork. Cabe shook his head in astonishment and the pair returned to Fargus, Lady Irena, and Sister Elaine with the dog in tow. The ladies were looking a little better, albeit quite hurt. The cleric had uncovered a box of religious items that had been stolen from the temple above, and the mage was going over three scrolls that were also found. Fargus was decked out with a shiny broadsword. Cabe inquired about the new belongings and was handed a small ivory windpipe, and a bag of gems worth at least 60 gold crowns was given to the halfling. Where did you guys find this stuff? asked Welby, who was quickly told that the boxes contained a plethora of stolen goods. The dog seemed to enjoy the company of Lady Irena as it sat at her feet chewing on its bone. Is that a human bone? She asked in horror. The response of probably did little to calm her, but she attempted to take it in stride as she attempted to remove the bone from Scotty who gave a warning growl. Screw it, I'm too tired to argue with a dog, she said. With the group gathered, the general consensus was to get out of the sewers quickly. It had been a long day, and each needed rest from the injuries sustained in their adventures. Fargus pointed out that he wanted to get Ioki and Dorwin, along with a wanted poster, explaining that the reward would help them out tremendously. He sliced off a length of the hemp rope and took Cabe to secure the brothers. A few minutes later, the foursome returned, and the brothers were lashed to Lothar Metal, who was also gagged. His stream of expletives had grown tiresome and gave everyone a headache. Cabe pointed out that he thought he saw a loose grate in a large chamber. He and Welby had seen it earlier but had not really noticed it. A kick in the butt started the prisoner parade and the group filed down the tunnel to where the exit portal lay. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.